Hi everybody, this is Gat Sad for the Sad Truth. Today I wanted to read for you an article that I wrote on my Psychology Today blog uh, back in August uh, 2013. The title of the article is Our Brains Have Evolved the Ability to Discriminate. I discriminate, therefore I am. <clears throat> Excuse me. So here we go, I'll read it uh, verbatim. It's a uh, an important point to make because oftentimes we think of discrimination as a negative thing whereas of course it has a much broader meaning in psychology and in psychophysics so here we go some words carry a positive or negative connotation depending on how they are used pride is one such example a person could exhibit pride in their work in which case this is a good attribute to possess on the other hand in some moral precepts pride is considered the most egregious of all seven deadly sins this brings me to today's topic, namely the various possible meanings of the verb to discriminate. The negative connotation of this word, namely to discriminate against a protected class of people, has utterly usurped all of its other possible meanings. People's, un uh, people's understandable desire to not appear as though they discriminate against others has yielded some rather shoddy and irrational thinking in contexts where the ability to discriminate between sets of stimuli makes perfect adaptive sense. I'll begin by offering three examples of discrimination, each of which is a manifestation of the adaptive nature of our perceptual and cognitive systems. 1. The notion of discrimination is central to the field of psychophysics. For example, what is the amount that one needs to reduce the differential volume of two sounds so that you are able to discriminate between them? This is known as the differential threshold. What are the mechanisms that permit organisms, including humans, in, say, olfactory discrimination or color discrimination? Needless to say, sensorial discrimination is a central feature of our evolved perceptual and cognitive systems. Second example. In my doctoral dissertation, Cornell University in 1994, I proposed the discrimination framework as a means of studying the stopping strategies that people use in deciding when to stop searching for additional information and commit to a choice. Discrimination in this case refers to the cognitive process that allows people to collect sufficient information in favor of one of the two competing alternatives such that it allows them to discriminate between the two options in terms of which one is the clear winner. The cognitive process of discrimination in my doctoral dissertation is not unlike that found in signal detection theory, a form of stimulus discrimination in psychophysics. Third example. Keeping track of statistical regularities in our environment permits us to discriminate between the probabilistic likelihood of events. For example, all other things equal, would you be more afraid of four young men walking down an alley or four elderly men? If you were to state that the young men strike you as more dangerous, does this imply that you are, quote, discriminating against the youth? Or better yet, does it perhaps mean that you are, quote, discriminating against the er elderly and thinking that they are less capable of being violent? Should you instead answer one of the following two usual canards? A, I know a young man who is very nice, so it is, quote, discriminatory to assume that the four young men are more dangerous only because they are young. Or B, most young men are not violent. Hence, it is, quote, discriminatory to judge these four men when most men of their age group are peaceful. I suspect that even the most politically correct individuals, when walking down a dark alley, will use greater precaution when confronted with the sight of the four young men walking toward them. Their ability to discriminate between statistical realities is not, quote, discriminatory against the youth or the elderly. Their caution is perfectly adaptive. When people refrain from discriminating in the positive sense of the term, they end up with astonishingly faulty reasoning, which is at times suicidal. For example, in an earlier article, I discussed the adaptive benefits of profiling. On a family trip that we took two years ago, airport security agents should have been able to discriminate between the respect of the respective statistical likelihoods of my being a terrorist, adult male born in Lebanon, versus my then two-year-old daughter. Since they did not wish to appear, quote, discriminatory, she was randomly chosen for a more in-depth security screening. 
Incidentally, here is the FBI list of most uh, wanted terrorists. Uh, I've provided there uh, a link to the list. Are you able to identify any statistical regularities in the list, or would it be, quote, discriminatory to do so? Political correctness and the desperate quest to avoid any semblance of appearing, quote, discriminatory resulted in the following baffling exchange between Congressman Lamar Smith and Attorney General Eric Holder. I've provided the link uh, to that exchange in the article in question. It would seem that Mr. Holder is unable or perhaps unwilling to discriminate between reality and a politically correct fiction. In another of my earlier articles, I discussed the case of a young female teacher who had a sexual relationship with one of her male underage students. The legal system did not wish to appear, quote, discriminatory against men, and as, and as such, she was treated more harshly than was otherwise warranted. Statistically speaking, men comprise the overwhelming majority of pedophilic sexual predators, and as such, this universal statistical regularity should have better informed how the law treated this otherwise despicable teacher. Finally, in another one of my earlier posts, see, uh, I provided a link, I also refer to chapter one of my trade book, uh, The Consuming Instinct, I pointed to a common cognitive error that people commit in mixing up facts that are true at the population level with supposed, quote, violations at the individual level. For example, it is a biological fact that men are taller than women, even though WNBA female players are taller than most men on earth. This fact, which is unequivocally vertical at the population level, does not constitute a, quote, discriminatory statement because one is able to identify woman X who is taller than man Y. Bottom line, the usurping of the verb to discriminate into its strictly negative connotation has yielded cognitive biases that at best result in poor choices and at worst are suicidal in their blissful ignorance of statistical truths. Please share. Have a great week, everybody. Talk to you soon. Ciao.